Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Design a Future podcast. I've got a very special guest on today. Please go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Hi everybody. So I'm Kellen from Metaphysique and that makes me basically a health, fitness and mindset coach. I'm wicked. Cool. So firstly, just to really break down the barriers a little bit for someone that's just jumped onto this. How did you get into this space? What did you do beforehand? And, you know, how have you sort of transitioned into this sort of online world? Um, okay, it's definitely a bit of a crazy background. So I started as a scientist. Um, I oh. worked in a lab um, in kidney failure research in Leicester. And I, I mean, I love science. It's always been what I'm all about. And I still, to this day, I am all in there studying, all, you know, everything that's coming out. That is me all over. Yeah. However, what I found is when I wanted to be an actual scientist, like the reality of the, the life of a scientist is very lonely. Um, and I love people. So although I loved, you know, what you're actually trying to achieve being a scientist, um, and like for me, it's all about helping people. And it, that's, that's always been my thing and always will be my thing. It just, it was just soul destroying. When you're strapped to an alarm clock, there was nobody that you're really chatting to. It was no good. So I, at the time, got offered an opportunity to launch a fashion <laughs> exhibition. Um, and so, because I love people, I went from mm -hmm. being a scientist into that. And it was amazing. It was really fast paced. And I spent 14 years doing that. Um, we launched shows in New York, Hong Kong, London, Berlin. It was crazy. It was a big jet set lifestyle. Um, worked many, many hours. Uh, and it was fantastic. Like I would have friends all over the world. I would we'd travel and do events everywhere. It was fantastic. But there was always that thing. I always miss science. Um, and I always the thing that I missed in that role is I wasn't really helping people in the kind of way that I felt I could and should. Um, so, you know, you know what it's like, you've just got that calling and you don't feel like it's happening. Yeah. Um, so it actually took uh, a pretty crazy thing to happen. So I ended up accidentally breaking my back. <laughs> but How, did quite badly. <laughs> How did you manage that? Uh, it was a very freaky accident. Um, I went to Andorra to go skiing and it was the very first night I had even put my skis on. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, in a bar with friends and we were just messing around and um, I don't know if you've ever done this before but you know if you go back to back with somebody, link arms and then you flick each other over your head. Yeah. You ever done that? <laughs> I, I can say I can say I haven't done it and I don't plan on it with this oh, thing. No. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I very stupidly did that with a friend um, and he, he's quite a big fireman guy and, and I flicked him over my head and it was just, it literally was a freak accident that the floor was like wet from having snow on it and um, I had big snow boots on and both of my feet slipped from underneath of me. They came up and then so I came down onto my back but because the guy was above me, he then landed on me but it was a tiled floor so it was just like a immediate impact you know like his weight my bone on a tiled floor and so um i got a l1 crush fracture um i've got photographs it's gross like the, the vertebrae is crushed in half and the top half was ugh, just like basically it sprayed out and it was all in my spinal cord and everything and i'm so incredibly lucky like i should have been paralyzed um i was also really lucky that it happened to be so stupid in andorra because they get a lot of people with broken backs, you know, from skiing and snowboarding and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, oh my goodness, the hospital was amazing. My surgeon was incredible. Um, I'd actually said, you know, I just want to go home, put me in a plane. He's like, you don't get it. He's like, you're really, really broken. He said, you know, one bump and you're paralyzed. You can't go anywhere. You've got to trust me and I've got to operate on you now. So I ended up having to do that. But it was during that time, when you really, really break your back, it's not like, oh, I'm going to be okay in six weeks. So you're looking, you know, they said it would be a year before I could do most things. Um, and Sorry, was you, and was you like training people at this point as well? No. So oh. I wasn't, I was, I would always studied. Um, so with science, I, I was very much into biology. I was biology and pharmacology that I got my first degree in. 
and I, um, but I was always very much into nutrition, health and fitness and studied it, but I didn't do anything work-wise. I was organizing these exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I broke my back, all of a sudden I was like, oh my goodness, like I can't just get on and do everything. Um, and I just, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's, it's one of those stories and it's always the way, but you do lie there and you do think about what you're doing. You just do. Um, you evaluate where you're at and where you think you should be at and what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time that um, it was about the third or fourth day after I'd had the operation and they get you up and they get you in this like um, a back corset to hold you stable. So they put all metal in my back and they then put you in this tight thing to keep you level. And they start to get you after, I mean, I had five pints, six pints of blood, sorry. Um, before you can even stand up, you're so busy, you've lost so much blood. But when they get you up, they want you to walk around. And I realized then when the, the surgeon was saying, look, Helen, I would really like it if you would go and chat to people in the hospital because there's people that have just had your surgery and they're not in a good place. Whereas you are really positive and you're really happy and it would be amazing if you would and it's good for you to get walking around. Yep. So it's when I then went off and I started to chat to people that I this is what I think kind of got me thinking about stuff because I realized that the way that I was viewing it was really different to the way that these other people with broken backs were viewing it. Sure. And that actually my way was making me feel good and their way was not making them feel good. And from that point on, I literally was signed off at six months and I was kickboxing at six months. Um, not competitively, but you know, just training. But either way, you shouldn't have been able to have been doing that Whereas some of the people I stayed in touch with a year later, they weren't even doing anything, mm. but it was, I'm, I'm absolutely certain it's mindset. I'm absolutely certain it is. And when that's when I just started to think about things when, and I came out with that and that's when I was like, right, I need to do stuff. I need to help people. I obviously, you know, have a different way of thinking. And if, if I can help people to perhaps tweak their way of thinking, maybe they can feel better about themselves and, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's, you know, in careers or whether it be in fitness. Mm -hmm. um, and so I then went on and trained um, as an NLP practitioner just to be able to learn loads more skills with it all. Um, and whilst I was doing that, then I started to realize, wow, I know all these people like that are struggling with weight and something clicked for me and I totally got it. And I had 20 years of struggling with my weight, even though I knew everything I knew, I was going through that hell of yo-yo dieting, overtraining, it was a nightmare. So I suddenly realized that this was magical and that you could use this for that. And so literally I finished that course and I contacted a gym, started seeing if there's any athletes that wanted to work with me. And I got working with athletes and that was amazing. Like seeing their transformations as I was going through the processes of these mind techniques. I started working with ladies that with, and I would combine both, um, so mindset techniques and just, well, I guess rewriting your mental story um, because we do live by the story that we tell ourselves. Um, and so to help people create a more, um, a story that's actually in line with their goals rather than trapped in their past. Um, and that along with then the, I, I became a PT as well. So I trained in that just because I had more confidence in teaching other people. Um, and then I pulled that together with the nutrition and the mindset and that, and then I literally have never looked back. It's most, I'm so happy that I did it. And it, you know, it's, it changed my life and it certainly, you know, I've helped lots of other people do the same. Amazing. Amazing. No, that's so good to, to hear your story of that. You've like gone through something that's made you realize what you want to be doing as well. So fast forward, obviously today, how does what we've just talked through uh, translate into like your current services and your current um, clients? You know, what sort of stuff are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis as of now? So it's a mixture of things. I still work with athletes. Um, that is incredibly rewarding. Um, with yeah. that, it's not the nutrition side. That is simply um, is mindset coaching to basically help them achieve high performance success and it's not just that once but be more consistent with it mm -hmm. um so a lot of zooms um or facebook um video doesn't really matter whatever medium people are comfortable working with so it's always face to face um 
whether you know online sometimes it's face to face in person as well but it's mostly online because i do work with people from different countries and stuff as well um, and that's an incredible journey to be on with somebody to go you know from where they're at right through to the competition i've been to many different competitions to watch as well which is incredible um but i also do a lot with women um and like i was saying earlier it's a combination of um healthy uh nutritional not a strict diets that's the thing it's, it's getting people away from strict diets Sure. and creating a healthy lifestyle that's actually manageable, sustainable, and actually matches people's lives. Because I think the problem is, if you, if you, you know, there's all these amazing fitness magazines and they give you all these incredible diets that will get you amazing results in 10 days. But the problem is they don't match the individual. So, you know, this diet might say, right, you've got to eat three meals and three snacks every day at these times. And it's got to be that mm -hmm. that might suit some people, but there's other people that don't like to eat until 11 o'clock <clears> in the day. And then they want a snack and then they want a big late lunch and then they want dinner. Well, the thing is, if you're trying to force them into a diet and a way of eating that doesn't suit them, then it's only going to be a short term thing. And anything short term is going to give you short term results because the minute you go from, one thing to another, everything we do creates new results, right? Okay. So it's trying to, it's helping people create something that literally works for them and their life. Wicked, yeah. And for the guys uh, watching and listening at home, I actually had a fitness influencer come to me the other day and they was basically talking about how they think the fitness industry is so saturated and you know they're, they're not gonna be able to have any sort of impact. Um, and that's one thing I said to her was, you know, yes, there are other people within your industry and in your niche that are doing the pretty much the exact same thing, but it's you that's going to shine through. Like, like what um, Ken was just saying, there might be someone that resonates with even the fact that you do something differently. You might have like a bowl of oats at 10 o'clock in the morning and put blueberries in, whereas the other person they're following puts a banana in. Like you'd be surprised how those like little slight things, if someone likes blueberries and they've seen you put blueberries in it, they they can they can be influenced and they can become a loyal fan of you over blueberries. So yeah, yeah I, I totally understand um, wh where you're coming from with uh, the whole um, fitness side of things. That's perfect. Um, one thing I would definitely like to ask, simply because you've gone uh, from you know working a corporate job. Um, I don't know if you want to call it corporate, is it maybe? If yeah, I, yeah, yeah, corporate job. Yeah. <laughs> so you've gone from, yeah. You're the going rat to race. Work in, yeah, the rat race. Well, literally, if you're in a lab as well. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, yeah, one question I'd definitely like to ask for, for yourself is transitioning into an online business. If I was to say to you tomorrow, um, you know, I'm going to take two apps away from you, what would those apps be that you'd really struggle with running an online business now? We'll take Zoom away away from that as well because we've simply. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> right now. Oh, that that's really interesting. Um, so, are you talking like social media? Can that? Yeah, be I'm talking. I'm talking. You know, if I was to if I was to come and delete two pho uh, two apps off of your phone, or even if if on your laptop, really just really just something. It could be as simple as. You know, I don't know if you use Trello, which is like a time management uh, application. Anything that you feel, you know, you'd struggle with? I think Facebook primarily um, because, I mean, just Facebook Lives. For anybody starting a new business, mm -hmm. Facebook Lives can be really, really scary when you're doing it. But it gives you instant feedback and yeah. you can really, really start to bond with the people that you're trying to work with and get a true feel for what it is that's working for them as you're talking. And therefore you can continue to, um, you know, just move forward and, and give them what they need. Um, and well, you, you need to be able to communicate with people. So there's got to be one in there that gives you that ability to communicate. And I, for me personally, I like Facebook. Um, and then the other thing I've tried Trello, um, but I actually, but the most simple thing of all, which is just notes in my phone. Okay. Uh, and I use it in different ways. Um, you know, I don't know what phones you, you guys all have, but in mine, you can, you can do lists and you can just do notes. 
And yeah. I use that and I make lists and I also make notes and you can search the notes through names. So I give each of my notes titles. Um, I find it really, really easy because I can just go into the notes. I can copy and paste, whether it be for messages. Um, it has links in there that you can link to, you know, whatever videos or mm -hmm. websites or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so literally the simplest of thing. Great. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of my favorite questions simply because, you know, we have so many different people on here running, whether it's online businesses, physical businesses, and, you know, they all mention all of these different apps and everything like that. But, you know, it comes to, it comes back down to the foundations. Like you said, you use Facebook for, you know, talking to your ideal customers, generating leads, and then, you know, time management or even project management can be done with a, a pen and a piece of paper. So a lot of people do tend to overcomplicate those things. Yeah. Cool. Um, obviously you touched on mindset a little bit, so I'd like to dive into that um, when it comes down to, you know, continuously learning what, if, if someone was to jump on this episode, for example, and they typed in how to make money online or how to start an online business, let's say, what would be one resource that you'd recommend them to start with? Maybe it's uh, some sort of like YouTube video you've watched, a book, a uh, trait, like an online resource, anything that you think would be like a good starting point, whether that's, a, you know, some sort of resource on actually how to start a business or even the mindset to, to get going. I have read <laughs> so many books. Like I, I am a bookworm. Oh, I oh. read constantly and I study constantly online as well. Um, so tr for somebody for, that's just starting out, I think I would go for literally listening to YouTube of, um, you know, if you put in YouTube, like motivational videos and things, Mm -hmm. Because I think the most important thing is mindset. Yeah. Um, because yeah. when you get the fire in your belly, you then have what you need to A, take off. Because like this is one thing that is absolutely true. And anybody that starts their own business will know this. And it's the same for body transformation or anything as well. When it takes 80% of the energy to actually get going. 80% of the energy and during that time, especially when you're starting a business, you're not even earning any money. So you're putting in all this effort and you're getting very little back and it, and it can be really tough. Um, but then the thing is, once you get to the launch, like a rocket, it takes 80% of the energy to launch the rocket. Once you've got into orbit, you then only need to put in 20% of the same effort to actually st to get there. Um, and so I think that to get your head in that place, you need to get the fire in your belly. So listening to things that enable you to get a feeling for what that's like, um, and also like things that will help you um, create a goal that does really ignite you, that gets you excited. Um, and then you have that mindset that then is going to enable you to study and do whatever it is. Cause every business is different as well. You're going to need different resources depending on what it is that you're doing. Completely. So I would definitely start with that. You need the mindset, you need the drive, you need the hunger. And then you've got really essentially what you need inside to do the rest. Amazing. Amazing. Perfect. Cool. Um, the next thing I'd like to ask you is do you use click funnels? Well, funnily you asked that, um, I haven't, but I am in the process of uh, looking at it. And I think I probably will go down that route. Cool, cool. So, sorry, I, I love to ask this question because you get so many different angles and some people will be like, what's ClickFunnels, what's ClickFunnels? But um, for someone that doesn't even know what ClickFunnels is, right? What sort of stuff are you considering uh, bringing on to ClickFunnels? So, I personally, I know some people use ClickFunnels literally as the one-off thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I will do that. I think I'm going to have my website redone in WordPress um, mm -hmm. because what ClickFunnels, what ClickFunnels does is it helps lead people um, through like a journey through your site to be able to take them to a product that you want them to buy. Mm -hmm. um, so... I've not looked into it enough, like for personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm not quite sure how that would work. 
unless you had your schedule set up in Calendly or something where people can schedule it. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, we'll make this one a little bit different just as we're talking on that. So one, one way that I actually use lead pages um, okay. for, you guys, for you guys at home. Um, I've used ClickFunnels. Um, I personally prefer lead pages, to be honest with you. But if we just quickly, and, it, and we was actually speaking before we started this in regards to, um, you know, YouTube and, and basically how you can use YouTube to attract clients as well. And one thing I know you just said about the coaching, so I'd like to show you this. Uh, let's pick an irrelevant video just to show you. Um, uh, it's a really irrelevant video because I've not got, not got it in there. Um, so yeah, one, one way that I do it, and this is what you were talking about with like the coaching funnel. Um, a coaching funnel that I have set up is even just on my YouTube, uh, my YouTube videos, this is essentially what we were just talking about is if someone wants to find out a little bit more about one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, they could obviously click on this link. They're going to come to this page and basically how I've got it set up is they come to it, they see, okay, it's the designer future coaching. Obviously they know it's from me because they've come through my link. They've come from my video. And then what I basically have is a video where I'm talking about the coaching. So I tell them exactly what they can expect from it, what I'll expect from them. And essentially I use this as like a barrier, right? So I yes. have like a code at the end of this video that someone if they go through, so obviously step one is watch this entire video. Step two is after the video is finished, schedule a call using the, uh, the button below. So someone hit book a call and they're gonna come to this questionnaire. Now the last question on this questionnaire is what's the secret code? So this is a definitely something that I'd recommend you utilizing because what yeah. that basically does is it, it basically gets rid of all of those people, what do they call them, like tire kickers if you like, yeah. watch yeah. stuff and they'll, they'll they look like they're interested etc etc but what that basically tells me is when someone fills that form out and they've got the secret code in there i know for one they already probably like know and trust me because they've obviously come through some piece yeah. of my content they've secondly watched the entire video so i know they respect my time and i know that they're invested into you know, making that leap, it going into coaching with me. So yeah, definitely, definitely a coaching funnel is is a uh, is a good it idea. Does work for that. I've lost your audio. Hello. I'm here. <laughs> Somehow. Oh, yeah. there you go. There you go. I got you. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So I, sorry. I just yeah, wanted to show you that just as we thought about. Yeah, that that's really good. Um, I think the only thing, the reason why I would stick with having a WordPress as well, and not everybody does. It's mm -hmm. just because I know that that is um, the, the click funnels doesn't kind of, it just, it's not great for the SEO side. Whereas um, with the WordPress, if you're wanting to be able to build up, um, you know, people coming to your site that are just not from an advert or something mm -hmm. like that, then that's really, really good, especially if you're doing blogs and things as well. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, like, like you said, it's not somewhere you necessarily want to start a blog. It says it's very much so you want to create pages with intent. It's not just, yeah, yeah. This, this, this is a blog or whatever. Cool. So the next question I'd like to ask is, do you use cold emails? I know you've got a couple of different business models sort of running. Um, are you doing any type of email campaigns for any of them? I actually don't use emails very much anymore. I oh. used to, but I don't. Um, I've got to say, I tend to do, in fact, that's a funny thing, because I actually sat down and thought, I should probably put together an email list. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like, I used to do that, but I don't know, people are, are going more towards social media and it feels more personal. Definitely. Um, and I'm not doing business to business. So if I was doing business to business, 100%, Mm -hmm. But right now, I feel I have more influence and more ability to get close to the people that I'm talking to through social media channels. Wicked, wicked, cool. So with that being said, do you have any tips? I know we said about like a new, new entrepreneur that's sort of looking into getting into business. But when it comes to actual social media, um, whether they're starting a personal brand, a business, or, you know, they just simply want to, you know, they might even want to become like an influencer, right? what would be your advice for this person 
simply coming onto these platforms, um, whether it's what platforms to use or, you know, how consistent to post or anything you feel that, you know, might be beneficial to the viewers. Um, so I don't have millions and millions of followers, um, but I still get a lot of my business, if not all of my business from social media. So first of all, I would say you don't need to have millions of followers to be able to do well from it, because that's something that I always panicked about. Um, it was like, oh, there's people that have got 10 million followers. I'm never going to be any good. And actually it's not true. Um, I would also say with which social media platform to use, um, I think you have to go with what feels right to you. Um, I do use Instagram and Facebook, but I am more focused on Facebook at the moment. It used to be Instagram, okay. um, but I'm more focused on Facebook at the moment. And I do have a friend who's a really amazing influencer that's got over 2 million followers. Um, she's a fitness influencer. Um, and she definitely focuses on Instagram. And it's not to say that Instagram is any better. It's just that she tried to do other sites, but what she finds is when she does that, you end up not putting everything into one and you can't grow it the same. So I would suggest, this is something I've just learned over the years. I tried to do a bit of everything mm -hmm. and I don't think that strategy worked for me very well. Um, I don't think to not try them, but perhaps focus on one and really do that amazing. And then, you know, perhaps allow yourself to dabble with the others or do a little bit, but really focus on one if you want to do particularly well, I would definitely say. Um, and then I think the other thing is absolutely be yourself. You absolutely have to be yourself. Um, I have definitely worked with a lot of people that have literally not gone forward because they're looking at influencers online and seeing that their content is perfect, that they, you know, they've got photographers that they're working with, that they they just have it all sorted mm -hmm. um, and and so they're not they're not taking steps forward but actually when they start to just be themselves it, people love to connect with people and you it doesn't have to be perfect that's something if you look back at these people like my friend I was just talking about who is a fitness influencer mm -hmm. she built her business um, a few years ago from just selfies it was just plain old selfies and just talking reality. People connect with people. If people um, can resonate to your story, then they're going to want to follow you. You can inspire them. And then that's how it goes from there. If you then later on and you're building a business and then, then you want to get great content, then that's great. But I, I wouldn't allow that to stop you. Um, yeah. And don't try to be what you think people will want you to be. Just be you. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And just to touch on that as well, that's something I, I always talk about when people come to me in, in terms of content. I always used to want to get the, the nicest camera or I'd go and get the nicest camera and then I'd be like, oh no, I can't use this. I need to, I need to have the mic to go with it. And all of a sudden, you know, years or years have gone by, you've got all of the gear and you've created no content. So one thing I say is if you've, if you're watching this on an iPhone right now, you've got everything you need. So yeah. And it goes, uh, I don't know if you follow like Gary V and all of those, but it's like the whole documenting versus creating. Now, if you just continuously document, like you said, over time, you can then reinvest those profits into creating better and better content. Yeah. So no, that's absolutely amazing. Um, one thing I'd like to go over now is sort of, you know, moving into the online space, you've come from like a corporate job. What does your... What does your sort of like team look like now? Have you started to build out a team? Like how and how are you sort of managing that? Well, firstly, sort of what made you what made you step into that and realize that you needed to obviously start delegating some work as well? So I don't have a team other than my husband at oh, the moment. Not, um, yeah. <laughs> I he like I was explaining to you earlier, I am lucky, he is a photographer. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, I actually find that I probably get more engagement on regular selfies and me just doing lives and just chatting and being normal than I do from professional photos. And that is a God's honest truth. If you go through my social media, you will see that. Um, so this is why I'm saying to you, it doesn't need to be all flashy content. But, um, so he, but he is incredibly helpful and you know, it is great because he'll also come up with concepts and ideas, which is amazing. Um, other than that, I have an accountant 
<laughs> because I'm not going to be trying to do that. But I think this is something that I will do because it, it definitely gets a lot. We were talking about earlier, creating content mm -hmm. takes a long time. Um, my husband also uh, does videography and editing, but he's so slammed with all of his stuff. So I'll probably end up um, looking to perhaps get an editor uh, because that takes a lot of time if you're not really good at it. Yeah. Um, and then someone just to help a little bit. I mean, you know what it's like, you get overwhelmed um, when you're running your own business, there is a lot to do. And, and, you know, just being on social takes a lot of time and engaging with people. And, you know, you do a post that works really well and then you get a ton of messages. And then of course that brings in workload. Um, so I definitely will be looking to expand and, and build a mini team, not a massive one, mm. but a small one. Oh, cool. And what sort of stuff um, are you looking to get edited? Um, so it will be, I think I mentioned to you earlier, so I'm doing, um, I'm in the middle of launching a fitness app. Okay, so yeah, sure. there will be stuff for that. There'll be content for that. Um, you know, that I'm going to be doing a lot of mindset uh, techniques in there. So there'll be lots of videos um, that will need editing. Uh, I may go back into YouTube, as we mentioned before as well, but that, the editing of that just takes forever. So yeah. it would be a lot of stuff. Oh, wicked. Cool. Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely would recommend uh, getting into YouTube for sure. So coming to the end of the, the episode, firstly, thank you for coming on. Um, I definitely think you've dropped some value for everyone watching and listening. Where would you, you know, where are you hoping to see yourself in like a year's time? Because I'd love to, you know, put this, put the date in the diary today, you know, and have you on in a year's time and for us to really say, you know, you've, you've to make me accountable. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I've been saying to everyone. And that's what I really want to create with this whole show is to one motivate and inspire everyone watching and listening, but also to create a really nice community, you know, with all of the guests as well. Cause genuinely the whole, the whole concept of the show is I love, I love seeing people do well. So yeah, you know, the fact that you're going out of your way to take steps, like it's taken a lot for you to, to leave your normal corporate job. And I, I love that. Like genuinely, I love, I love, like you said before, you know, you love coaching people. I love coaching people, being able to show someone my process of how I do yeah. something and them to go away and a week later come back and be like, Ollie, that yeah. worked. So I absolutely love it. So, so yeah, what, where are you sort of like looking to be in a year's time so we can really, you know, in a year, come back on and just say that we, we checked all them things off. So in a year's time, I would definitely like to be saying that my fitness app has just gone amazingly and that I have a really, really nice community on that. Um, I'd also, I've got another app that I want to create, but I'm not going to speak That's about it on here. Like your ears. <laughs> I know. In fact, I've got two other apps. I've got a lot going on in my mind. Um, and I think both of them will be amazing. So in a year's time, I would really like this first app to be, you know, going really, really well. I'd like to be helping women all over the world um, and have a great community with that. I would like to have also launched the other two apps and those also building up and doing really well. And the other thing, probably not have actually done it by now because we're in May, aren't we? But um, I would like to at least have it booked and ready to go is a... Um, like a retreat in somewhere like Bali or something, because I really do enjoy, I've run a lot of, um, do you know, uh, like workshops and seminars and that kind of thing. And you can't beat when you've got a small group of people, like when you do small workshops and you have proper time with them. So if I can do like five days where I spend that time really helping them through, like working them through these different techniques with mindset, talking them through nutrition, and, and, you know, actually training them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be incredible. I know that I can help people. And I know that when I'm in, you know, your face to face, you have a lot more weight. You've got them in that space as well. So you, you're helping them be in that mindset, in the, the positive environment with everybody, you know what it's like when everybody has that common goal as well. Mm -hmm. So that is something I've been looking at in the last couple of years. And I would definitely like to have it at least booked ready for next year by this time next year. Amazing, amazing. So sorry, just one thing I'd love to love to ask on the back of that. With the fitness and you know, uh, like business retreats and stuff, have you ever done any yourself? 
as in have i been to them have you yeah have you ever been to been to any before i've been to health retreats okay cool so just um yeah just tell me a little bit more about that because i know some people like i have a lot of different people that will come on and they'll, they'll say oh like i don't really understand like why someone would pay to go to i think the one was in like spain somewhere before but it, it was like i had to pay a thousand pound flight and then like two thousand pound for you know to be a part of the retreat um and they just couldn't get their head rounded in terms of like them investing that into them going on holiday they was like i'd rather spend the three thousand and go on holiday to wherever for a week um yeah just to explain a little that, bit more it that. is some people yeah. like some people would prefer to go on holiday some people like me i love to like from what really gets me is learning and growing and feeling good and and to meet other people that want to do the same thing um so you know when i did the nlp course every day that you're in that course surrounded by these people being offered insights and you're going through certain techniques you open your mind you feel different things and you grow as a person and you feel amazing mm -hmm. and being on a retreat i can't think of any better way to have a holiday than to be in that environment where every single day i'm being offered things that will help me learn and grow that i can train with people um, and which is great for making you feel good anyway with your serotonin your dopamine all of these you know happy brain chemicals as well as being good to your body and you're in a beautiful place and you've got time to spend and hang out with people. So I, you know, it's not for everybody, yeah. but there is a lot of people that absolutely love it. And it's really valuable. Completely. Yeah. And just to touch on that, um, I remember a couple of years ago now I paid like a substantial amount of money for someone If you're thinking it from that perspective, yes. so a pair of, uh, I don't even know any like expensive shoes, but you know, someone would go, someone that would go and spend, you know, 800, 900 pound on a pair of trainers. But if I told them I paid that to go somewhere for three hours in London for a day to speak to someone, they're like, what? So yeah, no, just touching back on what Kalim was saying. It's like people, obviously people will value stuff at different sort of rates and stuff like that. So if you have a look at, um, I can't think of what his name is, the like motivational speaker, like Tony Robbins, for example. Um, I, I love used to, yeah, so lo people love him, right? And people, people would pay however much, like a, a ridiculous amount of money to just be in the same room as the guy, simply yeah. because of like what you were saying, the energy that he provides and all of the other people in the room are there for the same reason. So yeah, no, I definitely, definitely vouch for investing into yourself, um, whether it is courses, coaches, um, or going that one step further up retreats and um, all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, I would look forward to that. Version, isn't it? Yeah. And I, yeah. I think, I think yeah. that's, that's when you sort of change as well. When you was talking about mindset and stuff, it's like when you are willing to, not just invest your time, but invest your money. Well, it's, it sort of goes back to that whole, like put your money where your mouth is sort of thing. It's like, if you want to start a business, then you will lay down X amount to learn what you need to implement into that business. Yeah. I have recently made a little mistake that I will share with everybody that I would suggest you don't do because yeah. I'm the opposite. I, I bought too many courses. I have literally spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pounds literally in the last four months on too many courses that I actually don't have time to do. So <laughs> I've still got two. I'm so excited about doing them, but two courses I've not even touched and they're not small courses either. There's a lot of investment required in time to do them. Um, but don't definitely invest in them a hundred percent. Like you will feel so freaking good. Every one that you do, mm -hmm. but don't buy them all at the same time. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> what is the time? I think that also like sort of translates back to what we were saying about platforms. It's like go in, dominate one, figure out a system, how you can then automate it and then go and do another one. It's the same with courses. Like don't go buy someone's course and then get halfway through it and then think, ah, no, it's not really doing what I, what I want it to be doing or yeah. And as well, the key thing to take away guys, if you are watching this at home is like, 
no course has got a secret ingredient or a secret formula that's going to help you get results. Like pretty much all of the courses that you will get are like the same things, right? It's just repurposed really when push comes to shove. And a lot of those courses that we have invested into, the information is available on YouTube. It's just a lot harder to, to sort of piece it together and puzzle it together. So also what I would definitely recommend if you're looking at investing in courses, every single course I've personally invested into, I've watched every single one of that creators, uh, you know, organic content. So like their YouTube videos, a lot of people, if they are right, they will be documenting their case studies, their, um, you know, their, client successes and stuff like that so really get to know the person you're investing into because a lot of courses are neither here nor there i should say i've got to say i'm really lucky with the ones that i've got because i definitely like i think what i find really really valuable is i don't need somebody to motivate me i i have like in my mind i am very motivated mm -hmm. um but what I think helps is a course, if you follow it through, you, it just gives you the guidance and, and helps you take the right action in the right order to yeah. enable you to get from here to there. Whereas I, without these things, quite often, I will do the research, I will put in the time, but I will just research myself to death. Uh, and it's and, also and like how much yeah. does that how much does that time you know how much do you value that time so it's like you might have to pay an extra 200 pound or something but you've probably then saved yourself five six hours searching through oh, youtube please. videos yeah. cool well wicked well thank you very much for coming on we've uh gone a bit past what i uh, usually like to do so definitely going to be a lots of information uh, within the video um and yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what you what you get up to and um, checking the app out as well. Yeah, let's see in a year's time. <laughs> I better please you. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thanks again for coming on. Guys watching at home, thank you for listening and I'm sure I'll see you in the next episode. Bro, well, thank you. Six.